Hi, everyone. April 29, 2021. Well, give up pets to save the planet. This man, I wish he would sacrifice his own life because when you listen to him, you know he is mad. 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 Like insane mad. If we don't put a stop to these people, they will just continue to destroy all good, destroy all joy. They will literally send it good riddance from all of our lives. Give up pets to save the planet? What say you? There was a study done in the journal Biosciences last year in 2019 that stated the carbon emissions from the average dog is equivalent to the household, two households electricity for a year. So we do have an issue here of carbon emissions associated with our, our pets. And so like everything else, you know, cars are convenient, flights are convenient, uh, cats and, and pets are, conv are, are, are nice to have, but we have to think of the consequences behind them. Yeah, but what, what are the consequences of what you're saying? Um, I, I mean, people love their pets like members of their family. You know, we're a drain on resources as well. So, uh, you know, this has implications for, for everyone, doesn't it? Sure. Um, people, it's about love, isn't it? Um, behind the, that loving cat or dog that we have, there's a, there's a whole ocean of cruelty, whether it's the destruction of rainforests for the meat, the destruction of the seas for the fish to feed our cats. Well, the real problem is the numbers. Yeah, but uh, Donica, my point is you could be talking about human beings as well. But, uh, I mean, you know, you it's, it's one thing to give up your car, but you're not going to give up a loved member of your family, which frankly is what people consider cats and dogs. Well, if we love our members of our family, if we love our kids, do you not accept we have to look after the climate crisis? If well, this I, you know, actually, of firstly, I want to look after my kids and my pets. That's, well, that's, that's quite shocking. I... That's quite shocking. Do you understand the level of crisis that the carbon emissions are in, currently in the planet? We what, all do you think I shouldn't do... be looking after my children and my pets? I'm saying that to look after and love your children, you have to look after your carbon emissions because we are in an emergency. Even the government accepts we're in an emergency. The scientists have said we've passed the safe tipping point. This may, may mean by the end of middle of this century, in, when our kids are just around 30 years old, they may be facing a planet that's facing starvation, floods, and, and climate destruction. We are an emergency. We have to wake up to the seriousness of it. So, what say you? This guy is an environmental campaigner, an author. What, is, what does that mean, environmental campaigner? He's campaigning for the environment. Okay, I think this man really needs to sacrifice his own life because when you think about okay so you have a dog and uh, well I guess caring for your dog is the equivalent of powering with electricity two humps whatever the hell he said okay um, think about all of the resources this one mad, insane life. Well, <laughs> okay, just think about listening to him. Well, he, I think, has just, uh, he has threatened my well-being. <laughs> what do we do with these people? It's an emergency, it's an emergency, it's an emergency, when really... It's not. Even Obama's, Obama's scientist, oh, Obama's scientist, scientist who served in Obama administration pushes back against prevailing climate change narrative. You know, people need to really start waking up here because these mad people, and we've got a lot of them all over the world, and they are whether knowingly or unwittingly a danger to all life, all life. Okay.
Uh-huh. So, let's just read a little bit. Pushes back against prevailing climate narrative. Yes, it's true that the globe is warming. Not so much. Uh, and that humans are, this is what he said, this scientist, Stephen Koonin, undersecretary for science in the Department of Energy during the Obama administration. So he said, yes, it's true that the globe is warming. That is disputable. Mm, not true. If You've done a little bit of research and listened to other experts talk about this whole climate change narrative that is pushed as a lie because they literally want to take care uh, uh, to control every aspect of your life. And it's not going to be fun when they actually talk about getting rid of pets to save the planet. Whole lot of, I would not have survived this long without my pets. Yeah. Okay. There's a whole lot going through my mind right now, but it doesn't have much to do with this video. So let's get back to the video. Mm -mm. But beyond that, all right, that humans are exerting a warming influence upon it. Yes, we have an influence upon the planet because we are part of a very intricate, uh, miraculous thing called life on this planet. Okay, but beyond that, to paraphrase, the classic movie, The Princess Bride, I do not think the science says what you think it says. Oh, wow. A little truth in movies, I guess. I have never seen The Princess Bride, but okay. For example, both research literature and government reports state clearly that heat waves in the U.S. are now no more common than they were in the 1900s and that the warmest temperatures in the U.S. have not risen in the past 50 years. Greenland's ice sheet is not decreasing any faster now than it was eight decades ago. Kunin noted that in 2013, he, quote, was asked by the American Physical Society to lead an update on its public statement on climate. As part of that effort, in January 2014, I convened a workshop with a specific objective, to stress test the state of climate science. I came away from the APS workshop not only surprised, but shaking my, or shaking by the realization that climate science was far less mature than I had supposed. It's dangerous to suppose. He said that he learned that humans exert a growing but physically small warming influence on the climate. The results from many different climate models disagree with or even contradict each other and many kinds of observations. In short, the science is insufficient to make useful predictions about how the climate will change over the coming decades, much less what effect our actions will have on it. So, let's just take these two. We've got a scientist, his name is Dr. Stephen Cohen, and he says, uh, let's step back, and uh, the science, climate science, this thing, it's not so mature, and, well, we haven't had warming in a really long time, Greenland's ice sheet, hey, it's not decreasing any faster now, but essentially he is saying it's not an emergency. But this guy, nut case here, says get rid of your pets because th this is just an emergency and governments agree. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I point you to playlists. 
one is a channel, one is a playlist, the other playlist is my playlist, global warming, climate change, nonsense, evidence, facts, scientists, climatologists, meteorologists, oh, a whole host of those in the field speaking a whole different narrative than what we hear from those clowns on the United Nations intergovernmental, not interscience, intergovernmental panel for climate change. And what do they do? They put out false assessments of what's happening with this climate. And then they write policy for governments. That's what they do. But here, Connect Dots, Global Warming Lie, Deliberate Weather, Disasters, Agenda 21, 2030. You know, we still have people who are claiming that we're all conspiracy theorists. We're just making this up. We just found this stuff on the internet. Oh, dangerous people. 500 scientists write United Nations. No climate emergency. Let's focus on that 16-year-old. Well, that's when she was 16. Greta, how dare you? How dare you? Climate change machine, massive manipulation of monstrous miscredence. I must have been upset. Quotes of scientists who dispute global warming. And it's an hour and six minutes, so hour and seven minutes. Despite evidence, climate change lie continues. And why did Trump keep Obama's scientists? Hmm. Climate change lie? The basis of Agenda 2030, sustainability, must be topped, stopped. Well, that's when this uh, petition went out, and it was signed by 31,487 American scientists who dispute the climate change narrative. MSM, mainstream media, global warming hysteria explodes, dangerous ramifications for all when lies are believed. You can't, you cannot believe anything that you're hearing anymore. You need to verify what you hear, even what I'm saying. Verify it. Listen to the scientists. Compilation of scientists speak truth regarding global warming. It's fraud, data manipulation, not science. Not science. Nobel laureate in physics, the uh, Prime Minister of Australia, Howard, attacks teaching of climate change. This is just going to go on and on and on. Why? Because people have such a closed mind, and when they listen to people like this, you know, like this guy, <laughs> It's frightening. Get rid of your pets. They take up too much of the Earth's resources. Well, you, mister, take up way too much of the Earth's resources. So, one, uh, 1,000 Frawley, PhD. Of all of the channels on YouTube regarding climate change, the fraud of it, this is the best. But there were plenty more videos on his channel, and I don't know if he took them off or if YouTube took them off. But his channel is filled with people who can speak on this subject because they have the experience the knowledge, the education, scientists who dispute what the United Nations IPCC is saying. So, because we are at not a tipping point, we went over that tipping point. We are now at a very dangerous, dangerous point in time, an unprecedented time with 
a lot of psychopaths, a lot of narcissists, all about themselves, continuing this lie. And the danger of it cannot be understated. Oh, my God. All right. I'll link below to 1000 Frawley, PhD, my playlist with a whole lot of videos. Yes, you also have to understand that this quote-unquote severe weather that we have do you understand that man has the technology to bring all of those weather events about? Scalar technology. These aren't, you know, schlubs on the internet hanging out in their basement deciding, hmm, I guess I'm going to write uh, this paper that, well, it seems like it's written by an academic about the uh, fraud of climate change and ha 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 that's going to be fun put it on the internet and then that's going to create an awful lot of conspiracy theorists they're going to pick up on this paper and they're going to think it's real and then they're going to repost it and ha ha no retired lieutenant colonel Tom Bearden who was an expert in scalar technology, speaking about how it's controlling our weather. I hate the idiocy. I hate the idiocy that is taking over because that idiocy is allowing people like this to get on mainstream media, spout their vicious, hateful, disgusting, vile self to spew a lie. Get rid of your pets. We need to get rid of these people.